Welcome to the New York Methodist Hospital Patient Education Series for Surgery. This DVD will provide you with valuable information on what to expect before, during, and after surgery. We understand the anxieties of having surgery, so New York Methodist doctors and staff work with you in advance to plan each step of the process. You'll know exactly what to expect, from pre-surgical testing to post-surgical rehabilitation, and we tailor the program to your unique health needs. You can also alleviate any pre-surgery jitters by being an active participant in decisions that affect your health. Ask questions, communicate concerns, and clarify your understanding of any directions your doctor gives to you. The information in this DVD serves as a guideline only and does not replace the instructions given to you by your doctor. It's best to discuss your specific health needs with your doctor and follow his or her directions accordingly. Healthy joints, such as the knee or hip, are necessary to exercise, play sports, and simply walk. Over time, our joints may become damaged through normal use, traumatic injury, or even disease. Luckily, doctors can perform total joint replacement surgeries designed to restore a person's active lifestyle. A joint is where two or more bones make contact. In the knee joint, there are two such places where the thigh bone, or femur, meets the shin bone, and another where the thigh bone meets the kneecap. The knee joint is the largest and most complicated joint in the human body. It supports nearly all of our weight, which means it's most vulnerable to injury and osteoarthritis. In some cases, the cartilage or elastic cushioning in the knee becomes torn or worn out and must be replaced to make the joint function correctly. In total knee replacement surgery, your surgeon removes the damaged cartilage and bone and replaces it with metal or plastic joints, which restore alignment and function to your knee. The hip joint, also called the acetabulum, is where the head of the thigh bone meets at the socket of the pelvis. Its primary function is to support the weight of the body in standing, walking, and running. We have two hip joints, sometimes called ball and socket joints, one on each side of our bodies. To repair or replace a damaged or diseased hip joint, an incision is made and the head of the thigh bone and socket are removed and replaced with metal and or plastic. The implants are inserted into the pelvis socket and femur. With your new hip joints, you will soon get back to doing all the activities you and your family enjoy. Osteoarthritis is a degenerative joint disease which affects the cartilage lining on the ends of bones. In essence, the cartilage becomes worn, no longer allowing smooth movement inside the joint. This causes a person a grinding sensation which results in pain, stiffness, and loss of function. Osteoarthritis is the main reason total joint replacement surgery is a necessary treatment. When your orthopedic doctor diagnoses you as needing joint replacement surgery, relax. Joint replacement surgery, or JRS, is a successful proven treatment that restores a person's mobility. At New York Methodist Hospital, we perform these procedures on hundreds of people each year who post-surgery return to full and active lifestyles. But, as with any surgery, there are things you will need to do before, during, and after to prepare your body, mind, family, and home. To ensure a complete recovery, we urge you to adhere to the following guidelines very closely and become an active participant in your health care. Follow your doctor's directions and partner with your healthcare team to discuss insurance issues, review options for rehabilitation, and prepare for pre-surgical testing and admission to the hospital. The first thing you will need to do is arrange for a visit with your primary care physician prior to surgery to assess your general health condition. Be sure to handle any dental work well in advance of your scheduled surgical date. After your visit with your primary care doctor, create a master medical history by listing all your medical conditions and surgeries, all your medications with exact dosages and frequency, and any allergies or negative reactions to medications or anesthesia. If you are taking any pain relievers such as Motrin, Advil, or others, you must stop taking these medications seven to 10 days prior to surgery under the direction of your doctor. If you are taking aspirin, Plavix, Agronox, Coumadin, or other blood thinners, you must notify your physician and pre-admission nurse as soon as possible. If you are on any diabetic medication, be certain to discuss any adjustments to your dosage during and after surgery with your primary care physician and surgeon to formulate a plan of care. After surgery, your care will be focused around several weeks of physical therapy. Therefore, be sure to work closely with your insurance provider to ensure that your benefits will cover the rehabilitation program of your choice. 
you can find a list of rehabilitation programs on the New York Methodist website. Select a family member or close friend to act as your coach or buddy before, during, and after surgery. Your coach will be the primary contact person to receive information from the healthcare team and should attend pre-admission visits at the hospital with you. He or she will be educated to assist you with recovery and rehab and should be available for about two weeks after surgery to help you with exercises and other needs. As with any surgery, there are risks, so it's wise to have legal issues in order before undergoing major medical procedures. This forethought ensures that your family is able to make decisions for you should the need arise. Make sure you have a living will or durable power of attorney, as well as a health care proxy. Our social workers can advise you on where to acquire these documents if you do not have a personal attorney. To aid in a speedy and complete recovery, you should create a safe and welcoming environment before your surgery. Remove all throw rugs out of your main walking paths. Move essential items to areas where you can easily reach them. Widen pathways throughout your home to make easy passage while you are using a walker, but do not rearrange furniture. Your home should be as familiar to you as before your surgery, just adjusted to accommodate your recovery. One way is to increase chair and bed heights about two inches above knee height. And don't forget to prepare and freeze nutritious meals ahead of time so they are on hand after your discharge from the hospital. It will be important to bring the following items with you when you check in to the hospital for your surgery. The New York Methodist Patient Guidebook, copies of advanced directives, insurance cards, loose, easy-to-wear clothing, a pair of comfortable, well-fitting shoes or sneakers with non-skid soles, personal care items such as a hairbrush, denture case, toothbrush, or eyeglasses. If you have sleep apnea and wear a CPAP, bring only the mask, not the machine. Do not bring with you to the hospital credit cards, large amounts of money, valuables, or jewelry. You won't need any of them during your stay. A few days before your surgery, you will need to come to the hospital for pre-surgical testing. During this part of the process, we will review your medical history and medications and perform various tests to ensure that you can safely undergo the surgical procedure. As the day of your surgery arrives, there are still some important steps you will need to take to continue to prepare yourself. You should shower the night before and the morning of surgery with chlorhexidine, provided to you by New York Methodist Hospital. Ladies should not shave legs the day before or day of surgery. There are dietary restrictions you will need to follow as well. Do not eat or drink anything after midnight the day before your surgery. This includes not drinking water, chewing gum, or eating any sucking candy. A representative from New York Methodist will call you the evening before surgery or Friday if your surgery is on a Monday and tell you what time to arrive at the hospital. Let your physician's office know if you need an ambulette or if you are taking access a ride. 